Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through and testing all the weapons inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see how viable these are for us to be using inside of our Zombies game mode. If you guys are new around here and you like everything Call of Duty, make sure you are subscribed with those bell notifications turned on so you're not going to miss out any future uploads from myself. As well, down below in the description you will find the link for my streams. I stream on Mondays and Thursdays, 6pm Pacific, 9pm Eastern Standard Time. I stream custom zombies and other zombie related games and generally have a blast over there and would love to see you all come and hang out. Now in today's video we're going to be uh, checking out number one the WWE event recently that has been added as I have completed the event so we're going to be using the uh, kick-ass WWE World Heavyweight Champion for today's run which is awesome. So let me know um, if you guys have completed the WWE event uh, where you are and if you've been struggling with any of the challenges as well I'd like to see who has pre-ordered Black Ops 6 and has the woods operators unlocked. Now I did manage to go and unlock our third weapon prestige camo and I think this is by far the best one we've been given so far. Let me know your thoughts on the prestige camos down below and if you are excited to see what we are given for our fourth uh, prestige camo I believe to be coming in either season 5 reloaded or season 6. Now, I don't usually mention bundles from the store, but this Celestial bundle has, in my opinion, the most epic inspection ever. Enjoy. That has got to be the coolest weapon inspection I have ever seen. And uh, in my opinion, I think that is just absolutely amazing. And if that is what we're going to be getting for weapon inspections on some weapons inside of Black Ops 6, I am more than okay with that. Now today with the focus on aftermarket parts and conversion kits, recently I wanted to dive back into an MW3 assault rifle that proved to be extremely viable for me to be using in all three uh, tiers and all situations across MW Zombies. So uh, without further ado, let's have a look at the MCW Assault Rifle today. We'll be taking that through all three tiers, taking on bounty contracts all the way through. So hopefully by the end of today's video, you have a really good feel on how the Assault Rifle performs inside of Zombies and by the end of it, whether or not this weapon is going to be a viable option for you to be using inside of your Zombies game mode. So without Without further ado, let's get to the MCW review video today. Welcome into another video. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. I genuinely appreciate that. Now today's video, we're going to be looking at an assault rifle, uh, the MCW, inside of uh, Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. And this weapon, um, last time I tested it was with the aftermarket conversion kit. And it's been a few months since I've gone back and actually used just the MCW without a conversion kit on it. So I figured today was a perfect opportunity to jump in and see just how this uh, assault rifle has held up uh, throughout the lifespan of Modern Warfare 3 so far. So when we spawn in here and do my weapon testing videos, I spawn in, I put on all of my perks with no additions to the weapon. Uh, as a mouse and keyboard player, I do enjoy using uh, Deadshot Daiquiri as it provides a little bit of extra critical damage, so I run that in every single game. Um, but aside from that, there is no additions to the weapon, and we go and pick up our first bounty contract of the day inside of Tier 1, and we are taking this on at the base rarity, just white on this MCW, with no additions whatsoever. And I could already tell that this was definitely going to be uh, something that can be used across uh, you know, all situations. It's going to be a very uh, good all-round performing weapon for, for us to be using inside of our games. The damage output on uh, the MCW, just seeing it here at the white rarity, after all the changes they've made and adding the aftermarket and conversion kit for this weapon, um, I feel like this is still some very decent damage at just the base weapon output. So at white rarity, that first bounty contract of the day uh, was definitely fairly easy to handle. I didn't feel much stress dealing with it, which is awesome. Definitely something I look forward to, to seeing when testing a weapon at white rarity. So the next thing to do is to go off and melee the Pack-a-Bunch machine before using the Pack-a-Bunch machine or applying a Pack-a-Bunch crystal so we can keep that awesome camo and blueprint on the gun for the rest of our run today. After that, it's time to go off and grab 
grab ourselves our second bounty contract inside of tier one and go and see how this mcw is going to perform um knowing that we still have it at the base rarity so it's white it has no ammo mods um and no tools to increase its damage the only increase to it has been visiting pack a bunch now i was pretty intrigued to see how this would perform um being pack punch only at white rarity on our bounty inside of tier one and i was impressed like this weapon is definitely held up through the life cycle of uh, this game definitely and you can see there it's definitely able to dish out the damage uh to the elites and the bounty contracts inside of uh tier one definitely so seeing how well it was performing i wanted to throw on legendary and shatter blast and uh go off and track down another bounty contract our final one of the day inside of tier one and go see how well this performs um you know at what i would consider max damage output that's needed inside of tier one being pack one legendary with an ammo mod i feel like you don't really need much more damage output than that to handle um, everything inside of tier one we got a mangler and you can see just how easy we were able to evaporate that mangler bounty contract inside of tier one being pack one legendary so at this point i wanted to go and uh, head off into tier two and grab ourselves a bounty contract but i don't want to increase any of the uh, damage output on this assault rifle i just want to keep it where it is and pick up our bounty and see how well it will do against a bounty contract that now has more health than our previous bounty we saw inside of tier one so here is our tier two mimic bounty we are pack one we are legendary and we have shatter blast on the mcw and it is definitely performing very well inside of tier two being only pack one uh, you can definitely see the damage dealing with this mimic was not much of an issue for myself uh, the only the only thing I had to do was kind of run around to reload and reposition myself so that you guys could see the damage on the health bar for the Mimic. But other than that, it wasn't much of an issue to dish out the damage, and I felt really confident and using this weapon inside of Tier 2 at Pack 1. So knowing all of that, it was off to visit our Pack-a-Punch machine inside of Tier 2. And uh, you just use the machine. You don't need to melee it if you want to keep your camo on and you're increasing your pack a bunch damage, just so you know. So if you pack in tier one, you've meleeed it, and then you pack in tier two, you don't have to melee it again. Uh, so now it was time to grab our second bounty contract inside of tier two and see what this MCW will do, being double pack a punched legendary. We have an ammo mod, and I was curious to see how well it would perform being um, you know, extra pack damage now inside of tier two, pack two against another mimic and the damage output was substantial um, just by going to pack two we were able to finish off that mimic in less than one magazine inside of tier two which definitely uh, is a viable option for this to be used inside of tier two so knowing this i was uh, eager to get into tier three and uh, grab the rest of my perks from the wonder Fizz machine and then venture venture in here and see how well this assault rifle is going to be handling all the congestion uh crowd control uh hvts mega abominations and bounty contracts inside of tier three now when i spawn in and go to tier three i always fly into the wonder Fizz machine and then i head over to this ritual to see if i can replenish my legendary tool and pop three crystal that i bring in with me every run and believe me, I was super excited to see that this ritual was still here today and available for me to grab. So I definitely took advantage of that and uh, activated all three of those rune stones to activate the ritual. And then uh, I'm going to make my way over here and get that ritual activated. And so that's super awesome to be able to come in. Again, this is one of the features I really like that they brought into the game um, in that you give, it gives you an opportunity to replenish your legendary and pap three crystals um, for your stash. So it's definitely something I really enjoy. And this particular ritual, I really, really love being able to complete and show you guys as it gives me an amazing opportunity to show you how viable this weapon is inside of tier three at Pack-A-Punch level two, uh, legendary with Shatter Blast on it as every single zombie and enemy will come at me um, on this pillar I'm standing on this pathway. So it gives me a great opportunity to show you guys as the enemies come towards me, you know, just how I'm able to dish out the damage. We have an HVT Mangler here. He's on the way to come get us. We've already taken over half of his health down. So like this weapon, even at pack two inside of tier three is definitely gonna be a viable option for you all to be running. I definitely feel like 
This assault rifle performs very well in all situations, in uh, up close and personal uh, encounters. You're definitely going to be able to dish out the damage at range with this, as it is an assault rifle. You can see here, you're definitely able to dish out the damage. And our turned zombie at the end there was just going ham, taking care of so much of the zombies for me to complete this ritual. It was awesome to see. So, like, this is definitely something I feel comfortable suggesting that if you need a good all-round performing weapon to run uh, inside of uh, the Zombies game mode, that this is something that you can feel confident using in all three tiers, um, even at Pack-a-Punch level 2. So, that is definitely, you know, good to see. It's nice to know that you don't have to be throwing on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, PAP 3 and, uh, you know, all the, the, the best stuff for this weapon to be a viable option. I definitely feel... Um, at Epic, this is going to be an option for you guys in the same situations as I am. You may just need to be shooting a few uh, more bullets to be able to take out your enemies, but I feel like Epic or Legendary uh, with the according Pack-a-Punch level for the tier you're in, and this weapon will handle just about everything for you. I mean, you can see here, we're doing crowd control right now at Pack-a-Punch 2 inside of Tier 3, and uh, it definitely dishes out the damage to the zombies. Um, I'm not struggling to uh, handle the crowd or keep them uh, pushed back at all. Um, it is an assault rifle, so running with the weapon, um, the zombies in Tier 3, the super sprinters, will be quicker than you. So there is that to consider. Um, so you might want to have maybe a pistol or you know your fists as your secondary so that you can get out of those situations if need be. But when it comes to dishing out the damage at uh, standard zombies, sprinters, armored zombies, and standard HVTs inside of tier 3 at pack 2, this assault rifle definitely is able to uh, handle all of those situations uh, for sure. As you can see on screen right there, it wasn't much of an issue. Um, lots and lots of damage from this assault rifle. So now it's time to throw on our PAP-3 crystal we brought in. We still get to leave with one in a legendary tool because of that ritual. And show you guys how this assault rifle does um, at Pack-a-Punch 3, legendary, with an ammo mod inside of tier 3. How is it able to handle crowd control? And it definitely is able to push them back a much more effectively than it was at Pack Punch level 2. Although at level 2, it was definitely still a viable option. But at uh, PAP 3, I mean, you can see the difference in the damage output is pretty remarkable. Um, so definitely, definitely a viable option for us to be using inside of our Zombies game modes when you get this weapon to max damage output. Uh, it's definitely something that you can be used in, in all three situations, all three tiers. So let's throw on mags of holding and go off and see our good friend, George, the Guardian of the Arches. And see how he is going to respond to this assault rifle at max damage output and then i wanted to try and show you guys uh, a good chunk of the fight so you get a really good feel um how this weapon performs with um an hvt mega abomination in the area the congestion that is tier three coming at you while you're trying to deal with your hvt bounty contract just about through my jug suit there which would have been no bueno because i certainly didn't need to do that now george was definitely eager to engage with us today but, like, I feel really comfortable, you know, using um, assault rifles. SMGs are definitely uh, my top weapon categories for zombies with the movement. Uh, the damage output uh, is definitely, definitely some of my favorite weapon classes to be using. Although I will say recently I've been playing around with some of the battle rifles and some of the marksman rifles inside of Modern Warfare 3. Um, weapons from MW2 and MW3 and I've been pretty impressed with them. They've been pretty awesome weapons so you guys can look uh, forward to seeing some weapon reviews on uh, those classes in the near future definitely. Um, but I was really, really impressed. I feel really comfortable you running around in Tier 3 using this assault rifle, handling the congestion, um, you know, dishing out the damage to Mega Abominations in the area. Use your Thermite uh, is a good tip also for you guys to take out Mega Abominations. As you can see, we're able to finish him off right there by using a Thermite, which was awesome. And again, a little bit more crowd control, trying to deal with the Riff Raff so that I can get in uh, to my reward, which we finally made it over to, which was an epic tool a three plate and the 1500 cash so not bad so next i want to show you a bounty contract inside of tier three and hope that i'm able to pick up a mega abomination because i want to show you kind of the strongest i feel um enemy bounty that you can get inside of uh our game and see how this assault rifle performs um however that was not going to be the case as uh this one self-completed i will take the pap 2 crystal though for free loot that is definitely a win 
and we went and grabbed ourselves another bounty contract inside of tier three and this time we got ourselves a mega abomination so that was awesome so before i headed over um, at that location i was previously i did grab uh the ammo cache just to reload my decoys and my um thermites sorry so i can take out our mega abomination bounty contract and as I've showed you, you guys have been following along the videos, I uh, usually come up here on top of this gas station when I have this Mega Abomination bounty contract in this area. Um, I use the roof to keep the Mega Abomination in place and take out the crowd control, all the zombies that are coming in the area. And then once the crowd control has been handled, for the most part, um, I'm then able to focus fire in on my Mega Abomination bounty contract and uh, deal with him. So this is a good tip for handing, uh, handling your Mega Abomination bounty contract in this particular area as they won't come up on the roof. And if you are, um, as I've always told you with tips for getting your Mega Abominations to fire up their laser attacks so you can hit the critical shots, is to be either above or below. So verticality um, when uh, fighting a Mega Abomination will prompt them to a lot more frequently fire up their laser attack, which allows you to do the critical damage a lot more uh, rapidly so you can take out your bounties much quicker. As you can see right here, this, this Mega Abomination is doing a perfect example of showing just that. Also, this roof spot got some great spots where uh, the Mega Abomination will fire the laser attack at you, um, but you're not going to be taking any damage, and you're going to be able to dish out the damage to your bounty. So it's definitely an awesome spot um, to deal with uh, Mega Abomination bounties, and using that strategy, just it makes this really quite easy for me to handle a Mega Abomination inside of Tier 3 as a bounty contract and as a solo player. So... I definitely never turn down self revives in the uh, reward rifts. Um, definitely want to make sure I'm always able to get up and get out of my games. So I definitely grab as many of those as I can. Uh, our Mega Abomination bounty contract dropped me a jug suit, which was awesome. So I figured I would take advantage of that. And now I've got two jug suits. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with the last one. So make sure you guys stick through the end of the video to see. Because I think I found something fun to do with jug suits. But here we are, we got our uh, a bathhouse bouncer mega abomination in the area. And I come over, I try to grab our bathhouse bouncer's um, attention and then head over to this rooftop so that we can get uh, the mega abomination to fire up his laser attack. But the zombies were just acting so strange coming up this ladder. And our mega abomination, the bathhouse bouncer, was definitely not cooperating. Uh, he was not engaging. <laughs> He was not coming over to our roof to fire up his laser attack. So this this strategy for me was a, a big L and it was not working at all. So I figured, okay, you know what? Let's fire some shots into the bathhouse bouncer, get him a little bit angry and see if he'll come over and join us on the roof. He did not. So we repositioned ourselves onto the top of this little tarp thing here and the uh, fired up his, opened up his mouth there, which allowed me to get some more critical shots. And you can see the damage that this assault rifle is able to do on the mega abominations when you are able to hit the critical shots it is substantial damage definitely substantial damage now i'm going to take a second right here to uh say that this is definitely not one of the most strongest weapons in the game currently um that is something i'm going to acknowledge but i do want to show this weapon as it is a viable option to be using in all situations it is a solid weapon that you can use in tier three you can use it um, at pack two in tier three you can take on mega abomination bounty contracts with this weapon inside of tier three so no it is not one of the most op and completely insanely broken guns in the game i agree but it is definitely another viable option um, that we can all be using inside of our modern warfare 3 zombies games to take us through all three threat levels and so i felt that this is definitely worthy of a video to show and if you guys are new to the game as it has recently come out on game pass uh the mcw is definitely an option that you guys can be using um at, you know when you start off to uh get some uh, levels and get some loot inside of your zombies games and then what a perfect way to use our free jug suit we got from our mega abomination than to climb into the hell of x build chopper with the jug suit going I was able to control an immense amount of crowd control that was here. Holy smokes, was this actual chopper packed full of players and zombies. So that was a truly, truly awesome run. I really enjoyed this one today. Tons of fun. I absolutely love the blueprint that I have on this at MCW. Let me know what your favorite blueprint or uh, bundle that you purchased is down below in the comments section. I'd love to find out what bundles have been purchased by all of you. Now, as we do... At the end of every video, you can uh, see on screen is the build that I ran 
for the MCW for today's run. So let's work together down in the comments suggestions. Uh, if you guys want to make any changes to the weapon build to maybe build it more towards mobility or build it more towards mo movement or, um, you know, aim, whatever the case may be. But let's work together in the comments section to make that happen. And uh, the camo that I'm running on there today is under all camos. It is under spray paint. And if you scroll over to the right a little bit here, you will find the camo I was using right here. The Psycho Pomp, I think is what it's called. And as far as the weapon blueprint I ran on the MCW, I will show you guys that right here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I truly appreciate that, and we'll catch you all in the next one.